This is the second lesson on this series in which I'm teaching you mixing and mastering from the core up. And this is because I've been making music for around eight or nine years and I've watched thousands upon thousands of YouTube videos. I've read dozens of books on the matter. And what I've found is that 90% of the information out there is just either confusing or plain wrong. And it takes very, very long to find those gems that actually teach you what you need to know to create music that sounds professional. And that's what I'm trying to do in this series. I'm trying to get you quicker from point A to point B. In the first video, which by the way, if you haven't watched, you should go and watch it. We have talked about something called the 3D soundscape, which is how you can frame the mix down as a 3D space in which you can place elements in different spots in order to hear the whole picture. And it is a very good way of framing, mixing and mastering. And again, I recommend you go and watch it and then come back to this video. What is this video about? Okay, this video is about referencing. And you probably are thinking like, that's a boring topic to cover, no? Well, I've been asked this question a lot it comes up very often, which is, dude, how does your mix down, how do your songs sound so good and so professional and so clean? My answer typically is, I just use a good reference. And they're like, yeah, yeah, but, but no, but how do you do it? Dude, it's a reference. No, no, but how do you make it sound? Dude, I, I swear, I just take a reference and, and, and I try to get the same type of sound <laughs> and they're like no one pays attention to me when i say that <laughs> but trust me it is the biggest improvement that you can do on your mix downs if you're not doing it already what is referencing okay referencing is taking a track that is already polished that is already professional that is already commercial sounding and of course commercial sound depends on what type of music you're making so for example if you're making dubstep the, the standard for loudness, for compression, is very different than if you're doing alternative rock, <laughs> okay? So, referencing is taking a track that is related to what you're doing and that you want to get from your mix to their type of mix. I wanna tell you how to reference more effectively. There are multiple steps that you can take while referencing that are gonna improve the effectiveness of it and in turn, get you a better mix and master. So what things do we need to do when we are referencing? First thing is we need to find a track that is, first of all, related in general. And second, we want to get their type of mix down, okay? A prerequisite is that we need to find a track that we already know that we want to get there. Why is this? Well. Throughout the time that you are mixing and mastering your own track, your ears are gonna get used to those frequencies and to those sounds. And that makes it very subjective and very difficult to apply an objective type of reasoning. A prerequisite is committing not to copying, okay? We're not trying to copy the track, but we're committing to the fact that their mix sounds better than ours, okay? We're already establishing that. Okay, the next step in referencing is placing it in our DAW correctly, okay? We need to make sure, I'm gonna show you in Ableton, but um, this you can do on every DAW. You need to make sure that the track with the reference is not rooted to the master. Why? Because the master is gonna apply your master effects on it, and you don't want that. You want to choose to root it towards the external out, okay? So external out, not master. Okay, next step, and this is where referencing actually starts. We are gonna go and look at the mix down of our reference step by step in the same order that we would mix our own track, okay? So first of all, we are gonna listen for the levels of things. That is the first step, okay? We're gonna listen to the levels of the kick is my kick loud enough compared to the reference? Or is my kick way too loud? And again, we're not trying to copy exactly, but we're, if the difference is vast, 
then we need to worry about it. So if your kick is a little bit louder, that may be just fine. But if it's a lot louder, it's probably not fine. If it's a lot quieter, it's probably not fine. So we're gonna start looking at the levels at the levels of things. Is my kick on the ballpark? Is my lead on the ballpark? Is my bass, is my sub on the ballpark? Are my hi-hats sounding roughly as loud? That is the first step. And with that, you're gonna get very, very far, okay? That is the most important part, probably. You're gonna get very far with that. <clears throat> After that, we are gonna go and look at specific frequencies, okay? So we're gonna create bands. For example, in Ableton, I would use an, uh, an auto filter and I create a band pass and I start listening to different frequencies. And again, cross-referencing the reference with our track. We're gonna listen to both with the same band applied to it. And we're gonna pay attention to the levels of things. So is the kick in the sub part loud enough or thumpy enough, um, powerful enough? Is the sub, you know, we're gonna go band by band, comparing them and being like, is this in the ballpark? Is this compressed enough? Is it? So that is the second step, going more specific into bands. Okay, the next step would be taking something like Ozone 8. And what we would do is, Ozone 8 has a frequency analyzer, okay? And what the frequency analyzer does is it's gonna give you the maximum peaks of each frequency of the audio that you are inputting through it. So you are gonna do this on your track and you're gonna do this on the reference track. And you are gonna compare both, okay? So a demonstration would be, we're gonna click on matching here and we're gonna, the target curve in this case, we're gonna capture it. So this would be our reference curve. And here in the source curve, we would choose, we would do it on our, track that we are mixing, okay? And then again, we would compare both curves and we would see if they are in the ballpark. Not exactly the same, completely matched, but in the ballpark. And then you're gonna think, okay, maybe my track in general needs a little bit more lows, a bit more highs, but so on and so forth. And the last step, it's not actually the last step because we're gonna be cycling through them until we are satisfied, but we could call it the last step would be checking the loudness. And for this, you can use again, something like ozone where you can measure the RMS. I recommend very strongly you use your own ears to tell whether it's loud enough. And there are some free alternatives for this that can measure RMS, LUFS and so on and so forth. So you can do this for free. What these things do is they measure the average volume, which is the perceived volume of a certain section of the track. So you can play on different sections of the track and you can compare. Okay, this says it's minus five RMS and mine is minus seven RMS. Maybe I need to make it a little bit louder with a limiter. Um, okay, so you are gonna go and again, try to match the loudness. And then you're gonna go back, if you think something's wrong with the previous steps, you're gonna go back, you're gonna fix it, you're gonna cycle through until you feel there are no problems with it anymore. And by the end of this process, you're gonna come out with a surprisingly good mix, okay? You're gonna get surprised by it once you listen to it with fresh ears. You're gonna think, damn, this sounds so clean, this sounds so professional, why? Well, because I referenced from a professional and clean track. It's very simple once you think about it. So yeah, referencing, huge, very important. Okay, so that was the lesson for this video. You don't need to apply everything right now that you're learning. You can start slowly, start applying tips and start applying more and more over time. But this is to get you into the core of things to start producing great music. 
Now you may be thinking, well, but isn't this just copying? Isn't, isn't this, doesn't this kill creativity completely? First of all, the best mixing engineers and mastering engineers do this every single day, okay? They do this every single day. And second of all, it is totally creative to get inspired and look up to better producers and to try to achieve the sound that they took so many years to achieve. The creativeness is on how you apply this knowledge and how you apply these techniques to achieve the best thing you can achieve. So if you have any questions, make sure to go down below and ask me anything. And if you have any friends that you think would benefit from this, then why not share it with them? They will love it. Now, the third video in this series, the next one, is probably gonna be your favorite because it's about how we put everything together in a framework that helps us achieve professional sound pretty much every time. But for now, leave any questions below and see you in the next video. Peace.